All right, in this video, we study the so-called heat equation a little bit and see how the Fourier series arises naturally from the solution of this equation. So let's start. So here's the problem. First, consider a unit circle. That is the circle of radius one in some unit and take any point on this circle. So this circle is made of some kind of wire that transmits heat. And any point on this circle, let's say P, can be measured by the distance from this point A. So let's say X. So this X, since this is a unit circle, this X corresponds to the angle between A and P. So this is X radian. And our problem is to find the temperature at any point, at any time. So let's say u of t and x represent the temperature. Temperature of, the, of each point. And given the initial condition, uh, at time equal to zero, the distribution of the temperature is given by this function f of x. So this is a known function, uh, known function. And it is known that uh, this distribution of temperature follows the following heat equation. That is gamma, which is a, a heat capacity per unit length of this wire, a partial derivative of u with respect to time, this is proportional to uh, the second derivative of u with respect to x, where uh, kappa here is another constant. That's, it. That's uh, the thermal conductivity via cross-section of the wire. And both gamma and kappa, they are positive uh, constants. By solving this heat equation, we can find this function, the distribution of the temperature at any point and at any time. Since this system is circular, it is uh, natural to assume that this uh, distribution of temperature is a periodic function with respect to the variable x. So that is at any point in time, x plus two pi is equal to u of t and x because x plus two pi and x actually represents the same point. So this is x, and if you add two pi to this, then we get the same point. So we should have this periodic periodicity of this function. From now on, we, uh, we set gamma and kappa equal to one. This is always possible by taking some appropriate unit. So instead of meters, we may use inches and so on. Uh, so by doing that, uh, we can just set to this value. So this uh, heat equation is simplified, apparently simplified to this partial differential equation. Well, uh, we don't explain how to solve this equation, but it is possible to solve this. If you are interested in how to solve it, uh, study the method of separation of var variables. Okay, so by using the method of separation of variables, we can find that Solution, uh, solutions of this partial differential equations are given by this. Uh, e exponential of negative n squared times t times cosine n x or exponential of uh, negative n squared times t times sine n x where n is any constant. Although we do not show how we obtain these solutions, but uh, it's easy to verify that these are indeed the solutions of 
this equation. For example, let's pick this one. And if you differentiate this with respect to t, uh, this one, uh, t appears only in this factor. So we have negative n squared exponential of this and cosine nt. And if you differentiate the same function twice with respect to x, n squared cosine nx. So x appears only in this factor. So if you differentiate cosine functions twice, uh, you get negative cosine, but we have uh, a scaling factor of x in, inside cosine. So that will come out twice. So that would be negative n squared and n squared t and cosine n of t. And so they are equal. Therefore, this is equal to this. That means we have uh, this partial differential equation. Therefore, this is a solution. And you can do the same thing for this sine part. But we are not done yet because this n constant n cannot be any value because we have this condition. This is called periodic boundary condition. So we n must be chosen so that this condition is satisfied. Actually, that's very easy. If we pick n from integers, then uh, we can make, uh, we can satisfy this periodic condition. Uh, let's see it. So if n is an integer, then to uh, no, n squared t and cosine n x plus 2 pi is equal to cosine n x plus 2 n pi. So this is equal to cosine n x. So the boundary condition is satisfied. The periodic boundary condition is satisfied. So as long as n is integer, actually it can be just positive integers, uh, we have uh, this is a solution. It's either sine or cosine times exponential of negative n squared times t is a solution. Therefore, we just combine all of them and the general solution is this, the linear combination of all these functions. And when n is equal to 0, we just have uh, this term. And uh, this term with n equal to 0, so it's a constant. So linear combination would be just constant plus all these functions from n equal to 1 to infinity and exponential of negative n squared t and some constant because it's a linear combination and cosine nx and some constant and sine nx. So this is the general solution of the heat equation. The next question is uh, we have an initial condition, right? Uh, that is given by, oh, where is it? This one. So we have to choose the coefficient of, the, of that linear combination so that this initial condition is satisfied. So if we put t equal to zero, then uh, we have uh, this one, and this part will be just one. And so it's a n cosine n x, b n sine n x equals to f of x. So the coefficients a0, a n, b n, they must be determined from this equation. This is the initial condition. So as you can see, the, this left-hand side is nothing but the Fourier series. All right, that's all for this video. See you later.